Nobody said it was going to be easy. And that is why Arsenal are kind of in a title race right now. We kind of knew that this was sort of coming, right? But two words come to mind, confidence and belief. Two things that when you are on a good run, feel so easy. But when you're not on a good run, seem to slightly elude you. Now, you can't necessarily say that Arsenal are on a bad run, but you can say that they're not on the run that they need to be in a title race. And at this point, you begin to worry about the 19 years between the last time they won a title and now. I'm not saying that those necessarily were, were bringing back something from the old days. I'm not even necessarily saying that we're referencing how Arsenal have kind of stuttered and started within that 19 years. What I'm saying is there is a significance to the amount of time between previous titles. And so that is why some bookies are going to put Arsenal as, well, second favourites to Man City at this point, even though Arsenal f still find themselves in the driving seat. And in this video, I will lay out how and why that is the case. Welcome back to the Morris McKenna channel. I don't ask you to subscribe. The subscribe, the subscribe button is down there. But if you want to subscribe at the end of the video, then please do so. Today technically could have been St. Totteringham's Day. This, this right here, technically is true. Arsenal find themselves 21 points ahead of this other side in London with only seven games to go for both sides. They're both in 31 games, right? It's kind of fascinating because Arsenal with a win today would have put it beyond Spurs. Now, technically, we all know that Spurs aren't going to come back and do something here, but they just keep kicking the can down the road and kicking the can down the road and kicking the can down the road. Sometimes teams can't quite help themselves in terms of building pressure. And I'll just scroll down a little bit here because it puts so much pressure on this game. This game, which they've only got five days now between uh, West Ham, this 2-2, and then going into the Southampton game, then five days between that and the City game, then three days between that and the Chelsea game, then a week between that and the Newcastle game. St. Totteringham's day can't come soon enough as far as Arsenal are concerned. But beyond that, why is it that Arsenal find themselves in this position? Well, they are one of the youngest sides, if not the youngest side in the league. Today, they started with the average age of 25.8. I'll give you another significant number, 2-0. We are suddenly reminded of Anfield. I am reminded of Anfield. I was there for the game. You saw the review. You saw my confusion. You saw, I couldn't quite work out what was going on, why Liverpool were allowed back into the game, why Arsenal made some strange tactical decisions. And I'll, be, I'll admit it, I thought when Arsenal went 2-0 up, this was a different game. They looked so confident. There was a range of passing in there. I was really enjoying the performance of someone like Gabriel Jesus and I wasn't enjoying the performance of someone like Partey at the time. It was a weird one because we knew that there was going to be an element of control that West Ham were going to try and exert through the likes of Rice, through the likes of Paqueta, through the likes of Antonio in this game. And in Arsenal, after Arsenal went 2-0 up, they were kind of allowed to do that. West Ham were allowed to play their way back into this game. And again, it's sort of confusing as to why. And suddenly they find themselves at a 2-1 deficit. Arsenal find themselves one goal ahead. Partey stripped and suddenly there is a penalty there. It's a weird one, isn't it? Because I'm not even really sure, if I'm being completely honest, that it was a penalty. Does anyone else get that feeling? Like I, I looked at it and I sort of went, you've sort of looked for that and I don't know why he threw his body into him like that. Like if he just sort of avoided him and gone around him, the foot kind of was thrashed out towards it. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm not really 100% sure it was a penalty, but we find ourselves at 2-1 now as Arsenal. And you've got to feel sorry for Ramsdale at this point. I felt bad for him because he was so positive at one point. He, he was looking like the, you know... I know he hates not getting his clean sheet, but, you know, he's basically one of the linchpins this side. He is one of the players that I forgot or should have referenced more at Anfield. He kept Arsenal in the game at this point, but it was difficult for him to do so against West Ham as they banged and banged on the door. So Arsenal go in at half time, right? And they are 2-1 up, similar to Anfield. We come out for the second half and Arsenal are on the back foot again, right? They come out there and they're trying to control the game with the 3-5-2, 3-2-5, come 2-2-6. But suddenly there is a set piece. Gabriel doesn't get underneath it. Ramsdale again, I feel sorry for him. And he's looking at a 2-2 at this point. He gets his hand to it as well. That's the frustrating thing. But when you get such a powerful shot from that position, there's not really anything you can do about it. Sorry, I'm just editing this, and I reference obviously Gabriel at the back, and I think he's a fantastic player, but he did have a bit of a shaky game today. I'd love to know what Arsenal fans think of that, first of all. Difficult to criticise Arsenal players at times, because I know they're on a title race, you don't want to pick too many holes, so, you know, but we've got to kind of work out why these things happen. I was really fascinated at the point, it wasn't at this point in the game, but where 
Gabriel was expecting Ramsdale to come out and collect it, and then he didn't, and he kind of put it out for a throw-in, I think, at the time. And then there was this long stare, and it was obviously on TV, which maybe you wouldn't see. Maybe this sort of thing happens all the time. Like, I remember a few weeks ago, happened in Liverpool games, happened in a few City games, where a few people have clashed, right? Now, maybe that's one thing, but... I didn't feel like there was like a great feeling around that. And I'd love to know from Arsenal fans whether you've seen more of that from someone like Gabriel or whether you don't really care about that kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, which one is it? Like, if he's staring Ramsdale down and Ramsdale's doing that like clapping thing there, do you care? Or like, is that what you want from a player? Do you want them to be sort of angry with each other? Do you know what I mean? So I, from my perspective, if I saw my players doing that, I'd know they were annoyed at the other one, but I'd also wonder whether, in, you know, like in his and the, the team's language between each other, the understanding they have, whether that's just them sort of going, hey, like I've got, uh, you know, did you have that or did I have that? Is that my fault? I'm sorry. Do you know what I mean? I just want to work it out. Well, what do you think? It's kind of frustrating because when I go back to this Liverpool game, I remember thinking to myself, why are they letting us back into this? Why is it that we find ourselves able to basically just put the ball forward and Arsenal don't seem to have a reply? At the time, bear in mind, Zinchenko is the left back, so it's not like they don't have a decent left back in there. We can't blame Tierney for this, who, by the way, I did actually think had quite a good game in midfield until West Ham found themselves coming back into this one. And why is it that they keep Arsenal keep playing this ball forward that our centre-backs love? Again, another thing that West Ham found themselves having to field was easy to deal with balls. So, why do that? Well, there were moments of intricacy. I thought there were moments of where Arsenal did look like they still had plenty of time to come back. But it's if you can get them beyond half time and the score is still close, then very often you think, how can they manage the game from here? How are they going to manage things from this position? West Ham find themselves in a place where they can put pressure and pressure and pressure. Why aren't Arsenal able to relieve that? Well, it's possibly because when people put pressure on Arsenal, you're able to move them further back down the pitch. The midfield supremacy where someone like Tierney finds himself in very often is no longer there because he has to go out to left back. Gabriel looks a little bit exposed at times, if I'm being completely honest. And weirdly, they're not going holding and... Uh on that side, you've got White at the moment. Sometimes I think it's uh, Tomiyasu, but it's not anymore because he's out injured for the rest of the season. And they go for the other side, weirdly. Like... I'd love to know from Arsenal fans, why do you think that is? Do you think that's because Tierney loves to bomb on a little bit more as Inchenko's normally not in that position? Normally they drop the left-sided uh, left back in. So would it make more sense? Because Antonio very often tried to exploit the other side. So it's a bit of a weird one. But it suddenly becomes that Arsenal don't have the confidence. They do have an element of belief because you still see there's beautiful intricacy. But the key for me, and you could sort of tell, was he was looking for... A, Arteta was looking for a bit of control in there. He put Jorginho in there. Jorginho was always always jockeying back and back and back and back and back to try and get himself a bit of space, try and give Arsenal a bit more field to play into. And then he brings Trossard on at the same time. And that was because Gabriel Jesus was sort of losing his head a little bit out there. He was getting into a lot of these one-on-one -on -one battles. He wasn't, and he's a great front foot player, but when Arsenal are on the back foot, Gabriel Jesus sometimes, similar to the Liverpool game again, gets a little bit caught up in the politics of things, a little bit caught up in the emotion of the moment. We're kind of building, aren't we? This is building, my friends, towards this. This big game. Huge. Later in the month. Ten days away at this point, because it's five days to Southampton, five days to Man City. It's pretty fascinating when you look at it, because this Man City team right here are cruising right now. They've just killed a Bayern Munich team. They've killed another team in the Premier League. They've killed another team in the Premier League. They've killed plenty of sides. And we kind of were banking on, in a previous video that I did, you remember there were a couple of, uh, I don't know, weird formate, there were a couple of weird fixtures up here, right? Because I said there was a second leg and then they've, they've got an FA Cup in there. There's a Leeds game in there somewhere. It's all building. I wonder if Arsenal are like subconsciously kind of building towards this game because really that is going to be the game that wins the title. Arsenal are one game ahead of Man City in terms of games played. So City have a game in hand. And if City win that game, there is one points difference between them. Not that I need to tell Arsenal fans at this point, but you sort of get my point. Even if we go into that, we might be going into that game, and I'm not, I'm just kind of theorising here, Southampton need points as well, in the same way as West Ham do, in the same way as Liverpool needed points at that, at that point. So they're kind of... Arsenal are playing themselves into a bit of pressure here. Now, maybe it's because the pressure was so small earlier on in the season. Maybe it's because we know that City are hunting them down. It's not as if Arsenal are freezing in the headlights here, but there is an element of 
they need to step their game up. Why, where does the intensity go? Where does the shape go? You can see them overloading that back line. You can see that element of belief. They manage to work the ball back into the six yard, yard box a number of times, but the deeper that sides get, the more they're gonna to have to have brilliant moments. And we're looking at people like Saka. We're looking at people like Martinelli. We're looking at people like Gabriel Jesus. Saka misses a penalty before it gets to this state. How? It's too simple. It's the first time they've missed a penalty since 2015 with Santi Cazorla. That's off the top of my head. That's something I read on Twitter. And here's the thing, right? Arsenal are just moving forward as a squad in general, but you need that to be validated here. Now I get it, like they've overachieved this season to a huge extent, but Martin Odegaard have got 20 goals at Arsenal now. That's one goal less than he scored in the entirety of the rest of his career for the other teams that he's played for, the top tier sides. Pretty incredible if you think about it, what he's done in his career so far, how much they've changed him into this goal scoring asset. But there were times where he passed the ball a little bit errantly. There were times where people weren't quite in the positions that they were getting pulled out of. You could tell when uh, Ben White was on the overlap and a ball went out to him, it, went, it kind of went under him rather than to him. And the ball goes out of play, allowing West Ham back in to this position of kind of e equality. Arsenal keep allowing sides to be equal rather than necessarily having supremacy and that's what I'm kind of, find, kind of kind of finding weird here like they keep allowing West Ham centre backs to just get the ball away or kind of feed it through to their goalkeeper the box midfield when they're out of it doesn't seem to quite work holding at centre back he was struggling a little bit with Antonio will there be other teams that try and exploit that in the same way the range of passing became a bit more limited and there was moments of sort of flicks and levels of confidence that you wanted to see from Arsenal but sometimes when you need a goal it doesn't need to be too cute in the midfield it just needs to get up front and you could tell Jamie Carragher was sort of saying the same thing on the commentary the ball needed to be more progressed Arsenal were trying to move West Ham around West Ham were just so comfortable with that Arsenal needed to be that cutthroat that we've seen Arsenal doing this season they'd been so much more cutthroat than this but they were making strange decisions out on the pitch and I'd love to have a conversation with someone about those some of those strange decisions why are they making those decisions because they got this run now this run three to five days between each game Southampton, bottom of the table, get really down there, really in the mix right now. Then it's City, then it's Chelsea, then it's Newcastle. Bear in mind, this City result has a huge implication. And City are dominant right now. They can't play like this against Man City. After that, still not easy. Brighton, Forest looking to stay up. Wolves probably one of the only neutral sides in this last one, two, three, four, five, six games. You'd hope at that point that maybe Brighton are focusing on the FA Cup after a win against someone like Manchester United, but it's a tricky one, right? Newcastle, they've had a bit of a slip more recently. Can Arsenal kind of implement some supremacy against them? Same against Chelsea. I'm not theorizing here. I'm just saying, I, am, I mean, I'm totally theorizing, but I, you know, I'm trying not to theorize too much. This game seems to be the game of the season, doesn't it? It is just the huge, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it's basically just, I mean, let me just zoom out a little bit and let me show you what their actual fixture list looks like. This is what the fixture list really looks like. It's just that, isn't it? Now, obviously I don't want it to be that. Obviously what you really want is that they go to the Etihad and maybe it's a draw or maybe it's something like that, right? And then the rest of these games, they can sort of relieve the pressure but they're not helping themselves in this run of games down here. They've not had the control in midfield. I didn't think Partey had a particularly good game. I didn't think that Gabriel Jesus at times giving the ball away helped. Other game, other people I actually think was really good. I really enjoyed Martinelli. Martinelli in, in so key in both those goals. But let's see what happens. Hey guys, I'll be interested to know what you guys think. Um, frustrating. I still think Arsenal are a really good side. I still think they deserve to win the Premier League because they've been the best team in the Premier League this season over the games so far. City are sure coming in some form right now. But even then, I enjoy watching Arsenal more. I enjoy the vibrance, the vibe, the, the joie de vivre, the vibe, the, you know, go with me here. Arsenal fans, this is very much still on. But Arsenal, you've got to hold your nerve. Arteta, head up. Saka, head up. It doesn't matter about missing penalties. You've been through missing penalties before. Do something here about this. Arsenal, get a handle on stuff. This next week is about getting a handle on it. I look forward to hearing what you guys have to think. I wasn't particularly thrilled about the game. Got to admit, I was supporting Arsenal in this one, weirdly. Um, confidence. It's all about that, guys.
It's going to be interesting to see how Arsenal do in the rest of the season now. Let me know what you guys think. What does it go down to? Can they beat City at the Etihad? What are your predictions for that? What are your predictions for the last few games? Bear in mind, during run-ins, City have also had trips. It's going to be interesting to see if they trip as well or whether they're coming to form at just the right moment. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think happens. Oh, it's getting stressful. I will see you guys in another one. Much love.